let's talk about five simple, practical ways that you can stop stressing about your house. I don't know if you're like this, but here is something I've noticed about myself. I feel like the state of my house. (laughs) That can be a good thing, or more often than not, it's a bad thing. If my house is put together, I feel put together. If my house is a wreck, I feel like a wreck. And with three little kids under age six, more often than not, my house is a wreck. That's why I'm always looking for ways to simplify, get organized, get caught up, and get it together. I wanna give you five simple things that you can do to help you put this into practice where you can stop stressing so much about your house like maybe you have been, and I certainly have been in the past. The first one is this, create systems and schedules. Now, if you're like me and you are a creative or you're a free spirit, you probably don't like rules, routines, systems, schedules, but here's the thing. These systems, these schedules, simply are a means to an end. They are the way you get organized. They are the way you get it together. They are the way you get the result you want. So what does that look like for you? What are your routines around your house with cleaning, organizing, laundry, dishes? I'll give you a practical example. For me, if I do not spend my Sunday night getting caught up for the week ahead, my week is a disaster. I'm coming from behind, things seem to compound, and the laundry just explodes, the dishes are unending, and the mess just continues to grow. So laundry, for example. Sunday night is my night to get caught up with laundry. That is the night I fold the laundry, put all the laundry in all the respective rooms, put them in the closets, put them in the shelves, put them in the drawers, and get caught up. So let me just tell you what happens when I don't do this, when I don't spend my Sunday nights doing my laundry routine, putting everything away for the week ahead. I fall into this terrible pattern where my laundry goes from on the bed because why? I have great intentions to fold it that night. But then I get home. I'm tired. It's time for bed. I don't want to fold the laundry. So what do I do? I just move it to the floor. I think, tomorrow. I'll fold it tomorrow. I will fold it tomorrow. Sure, I will. Next morning. Wake up, Carter's screaming, Conley doesn't have clean clothes, where's my sweatshirt, where's my uniform, where's my khaki pants? I'm throwing things, things are going on the floor, where's the laundry, I don't know. And then it's on the floor. Now, now we need to put this back together for the next day, right? Oh, wait, let me put it back, let me just, hang on. Let me just put this back. You know what, I'm gonna move it a little higher on my bed, I'm gonna move it like, on my pillow, because can't lay my head on the pillow unless I complete this basket of laundry. And then that night, I go upstairs, sure enough, ready to go to bed. Not tonight, nope. That sucker's going back on the floor. And we do this routine from the bed to the floor, from the bed to the floor, until all the laundry is so dirty, it's just ready to go back to the laundry room and get washed again. Let me tell you something. I have a way of getting through laundry if I don't do my perfect Sunday night routine. That system just sucks. Guys, that one simple thing of having a Sunday night system to get caught up has saved me so much stress throughout the week. So what does that look like for you? What simple system or schedule or routine do you wanna set to make your life easier for the rest of the week? Maybe on Sundays, you do meal planning and you plan out what you're gonna cook for dinner every single night of the week. Maybe every evening you pack lunches for the day ahead for your kids. Maybe it's something simple and practical. Maybe it's something that just gives you a sense of sanity in your day and your home and in your life. When you create systems and schedules and routines in your home, It's one simple way to help you stop stressing about your house. The second thing that you can do is to get help and delegate. Now, here's the thing. Your family is capable of helping you with the house. Did you know that? Did you? Because here's here's what I tend to do more often than not. I do everything and then I'm really grouchy about it because I didn't ask for help. Now, when you ask for help 
and your husband steps in and loads the dishwasher for you, does he do it different than you? Sure does. Does it wrong? For sure. You could organize those cups so much more efficiently. It is adult Tetris. And didn't you know the bowls go on the bottom? Do you know how many more things you could fit if you would do it my way? But you know what? Having help is a lot better than living your life stressed and hateful. Let your family help. Let your husband load that dishwasher however he wants to. Because let me tell you something, those dishes are getting clean either way. Even if it's not your way, even if it's not the right way, it will still get done and it will save you so much stress and time when you allow people to come around you and help you. And you know what else? Your kids can help you. Your kids can do more than you realize. And with with little kids that are getting a little bit older, a little bit more independent, I'm learning this every day. The other day, for example, Carter wanted to go to my mom's house to play. But before I would let him go, I said, well, you have to clean your room and you have to take all your stuff on the stairs, upstairs and put it away. Yeah, I said it. Now I knew, I had no idea what was gonna happen. I had no idea when I made this request, this requirement of my six-year-old son, if he would do it or if he would give up. He didn't really want to go to Grammys. He was going to get distracted by Legos. Who knew? Wouldn't you know? 20 minutes later, that child's room was clean and the stairs were cleaned off as well. When you ask your family to help you or delegate when you can and should to your children, It saves you time and peace of mind. It saves you that stress you'd been feeling when you try to do everything yourself. So the second way that you can stop stressing about your house is to get help and delegate. The third way that you can stop stressing is to know what to fight for and know what to let go. Everything is not important. If everything's important, nothing is. So you need to know what's important to you, what's really important, and then fight for those things. What does that look like for you? Is it Sunday night dinner around the dinner table? That is really important to you, so you want to make sure you have time on Sunday to cook a great meal, have the house clean, and sit down to a sit-down dinner. If that's important to you, then fight for that. Make that a priority and make it happen. Maybe for you, it's something else. Maybe for you, all you need to feel okay in your world is you are going to have your kitchen clean. Everything else can be a little crazy, but the kitchen where you cook, needs to stay at least somewhat clean. Okay, that's good to know because you can fight to keep that room clean and other stuff, you can have a little bit of grace and let that stuff go. I've used this example before, but I've chosen which rooms I fight for and which rooms I let go. And that has given me such peace of mind when I walk in the rooms that are maybe not as clean to know I don't have to feel guilty I don't have to feel like I'm failing. I'm choosing to let those rooms go because I'm gonna focus my attention and my energy to what's more important to me. Do this in your own home. What's important to you? Fight for those things. What can you let go? Find a way to let them go and find grace there. Which brings me to your fourth way to stop stressing about your house. Have grace for the season you're in. The season you're in will affect what your home looks like. For example, if you are in a season of traveling all the time, you're probably living out of a suitcase, you've got laundry that's always in transition, and things are probably not very clean, and you probably don't have a lot of food in the pantry. That's okay. That doesn't mean you're failing. It's a reflection of the season you're in, where you're traveling all the time. Maybe you're in a season like I am with little kids, and there's just crumbs everywhere. No matter how much you clean, it doesn't matter if you have a Roomba, it doesn't matter how hard you work, there's going to be crumbs. Now, I could look at those crumbs and feel like a failure, and I have before, but now what I try to do is remind myself I am in a season of little kids. These little kids make a mess. I am not a mess. When you remember the season you're in, it helps you find grace for yourself, and also it helps you find the strength you need to get through any of the challenges you might face as a result of that season, how it affects you and how it affects your home. And finally, the fifth way that you can stop stressing about your house is probably the most simple, but it's also the most powerful. Focus on the good. 
focus on what is right. You know, recently I was scrolling through my phone, looking at old pictures, trying to find a specific picture of my son for something I was doing. When I was scrolling through these old pictures from a few years ago, I came across a series of pictures of our house before we got it remodeled. Now, the remodel was pretty light in the grand scheme of things. We didn't gut it. We didn't do anything major. We just hired a handyman to help us put in some new floors and freshen up the paint on the walls. But y'all, the transformation was huge. If I'm not careful, I'm always focused on what's still wrong about my house, what I want to fix about my house, what I wish were better or different or newer or bigger or fancier about my house. And I will totally miss all of the things that are right and good and awesome, all of the things that I had wanted for so long, like new floors and fresh paint that look so good that we work so hard for. So what about you? What's right about your house? You know, sometimes I get discouraged because our house is older. It was built in the early 80s, and there's some things about it that just bug me. But when I shift my focus to the good in my house, to what's right about my house, I could go on for days. We have the greatest neighbors in the entire world. I never want to move because I love them so much. I love that this is the home we brought all three children home to from the hospital. I love that this house is perfectly located between my husband's work, my work, and my kids' school. I love that this house gives us this huge playroom to play in, a big backyard, and mature trees that give us awesome shade. I could go on and on about the awesome things about our house. That's why Simply focusing on the good changes everything, not only about how we feel about our house, but the level of stress that we feel as well. So the fifth way that you can stop stressing about your house is to focus on the good. Like we've talked about before, in anything in life, you'll always find what you're looking for. So look for the right things. Y'all, when you do these five things, these five simple, practical things from setting up systems and routines to help you reduce stress or asking for help and delegating or having grace for the season that you're in to focusing on the good and knowing what to fight for and what to let go of, these things can help you reduce your stress when it comes to your house and it will help you enjoy your life a whole lot more.